Hey guys, it is life coach and licensed therapist Robin May, and I am really excited to share this conversation with you. And let me pause and repeat that or to change that. I think this conversation is important. It's not necessarily my favorite topic, but I think it's an important one and I'll tell you what I mean. But as we are getting started, I want to invite you to go ahead right now, share this video on your social media. I like to call this must watch Facebook. So go ahead and share this on your social media so that we can dive into this conversation. Our topic today is should I stay or should I go? three questions you need to ask yourself. Before we dive in, I want to personally invite you to join me for my upcoming training. Now this I am excited about. Next week, starting March 6th, then you have an option of March 7th or an option of March 8th. Right from the comfort of your own home, in your office, as you're driving home from work, you have the option to join me for this free training. It is free. It is live and it can change your marriage. I am teaching three, or I'm sorry, four, it's actually four simple steps to help you and your spouse get out and stay out of the roommate zone. Let me tell you, I don't teach anything that I wouldn't apply in my own marriage. I don't teach anything that I wouldn't share with my clients. And this is critical for your marriage. Next week, I am sharing with you the simple four-step process that my husband and I have been using and that I've been teaching clients to get out and stay out of the roommate zone. Just go to ibelieveinmarriage.com slash roommate zone to register. It's free, y'all. It's from the comfort of your own home and it can change your marriage. All right, so it's time for us to dive into our topic today. Again, the topic it is, the topic is should I stay or should I go? There are three questions that I want you to ask yourself. Now, over the years, I've been working with couples and with marriages for many, many years, and I've done a topic like this before. And someone asked me once, they said, Robin, listen, if you are a woman of God, if you are a faith-filled woman, why would you even talk about walking away from your marriage or anybody else walking away from their marriage? This is what I say. Because I'm a woman of God, because I'm a woman of God, we have to have these tough conversations because here is the reality. People are hurting people are struggling, and people are looking for somebody to help give them some clarity, help them understand what to do with what they are feeling. So I believe the body of Christ has done a bit of a disservice because we want to shy away from tough conversations. And so if there is someone who is struggling with, should I stay in my marriage? Is it worth it? Is it going to change? Is he going to ever change? Is she ever going to change? Are we ever going to get that connection? I think we need to have the conversation. All right. So let me say this up front. Um, I am often described as a hopeless optimist when it comes to marriage. Listen, I know that God is still in the miracle working business. And I know right here in 2018, he can still resurrect anything from the dead. So even as we are going through this, as I'm sharing these three questions, it is coming from a standpoint that I want to encourage you to give it one more shot. I want you not to throw in the towel yet. I want you to try one more time. So as I am sharing these three tips, these three questions, know that that's the place that I'm coming from. I want you to try one more more time. Now, I know there's somebody who is watching this video. Maybe you saw it shared on someone else's page, or maybe you were just scrolling, minding your own business, scrolling through your Facebook, and you saw this, this title. I want to encourage you. Maybe, as you listen to these three questions, maybe there is something that God has given me that will help to encourage you. I don't believe in coincidence. I believe that God orchestrates everything. And so maybe you are listening to this video because there's something that he wants to say to you. All right. So I'm ready to give you the three questions. Oh, y'all, I'm wearing my brand new loved tea. I know it's a little backwards on the screen, but it says loved and I believe in marriage. Y'all, these are our new I believe in marriage shirts. I'm loving them. All right. Here is question number one. Are you ready? Should I stay or should I go? Three questions you should ask yourself. Here is question number one. How have I contributed to the chaos? 
How have I contributed to the chaos in my marriage? So often when couples come in to see me, they plop down on the couch and I ask them, tell me what's going on. And often the wife or the husband will start the dialogue and they'll say, Robin, I'm just frustrated because my spouse isn't doing this or he won't do this or she won't do that. And they'll go down a litany of all the reasons why they are frustrated. And often it comes from a place of what their spouse isn't doing. And of course, because we're in counseling, I allow them that time to process because that's important. But I always come back to this. You were clearly able to pinpoint everything that your spouse is doing that is creating dissatisfaction from you or for you. Here is my question. How are you contributing to the chaos that's going on in the marriage? And if I'm, off, if I'm honest, people often have a hard time talking through that. They often have a hard time taking ownership of how they have contributed to the chaos. People have no problem listing out all the things that their spouse has done. But when I say, well, what about you? Okay, I heard that and we're gonna get to that. We're gonna get to those frustrations. But what about you? How have you contributed to the chaos? How have you disappointed your spouse? How have you neglected the needs of your spouse? Often people have a hard time identifying that. So the question is, should I stay or should I go? The first question is I want you to ask yourself is how have I contributed to the chaos? Have you been aggressive in the marriage? Have you been passive? Because many times those that are passive get a pass because it kind of is like, well, I'm not yelling, I'm not screaming, I'm not going off on him, but are you being passive? Because remember the Bible says iron sharpens iron. Are you not speaking up when you need to speak up? So are you being aggressive or are you being passive? Are you smoldering your spouse or are you withdrawing? Are you being a peacekeeper, not a peacemaker, but are you being a peacekeeper or are you being too critical? Are you being stubborn? Are you being unsupportive? Listen, both sides of the coin, whether you're being aggressive or passive, that could be contributing to it. Whether you're smoldering your spouse or you're withdrawing from your spouse, that could be contributing to it. If you are a peacekeeper, let me tell you the difference. I was at a conference once, um, a little, about three or four months ago, my husband and I were, and it was a really a small retreat. And the leaders were up, it was a marriage retreat, and the leaders were up, and the wife, I believe, said, peacekeepers create just as much um, chaos in the marriage as those who are critical. Y'all, I was shocked, peacekeepers? And she said, because remember, there is a difference between a peacemaker and a peacekeeper. The peacekeeper is trying to keep peace at all costs, but the peacemaker is working toward peace and that's totally different. So whether you're on the coin of being a peacekeeper or you're being too critical, whether you're being too stubborn, I want you to ask yourself, how have I contributed to the chaos in my marriage? Let me ask you this, before you walk away, have you stopped and asked your spouse, is there something you need from me that I'm not giving you? Now, have you asked that sincerely, not waiting to give your response about what you need, not waiting to point out the reason why you are not doing it? Have you honestly paused and asked your spouse, is there something you need from me that I'm not giving you? Has there been a safe space created in your marriage to talk about tough things? Or when there is a tough conversation, do you and your spouse shut down? Are you at each other's throats? Do one of you leave frustrated, leave feeling unheard? Do you even know how to create a safe space? These are important things to consider when I'm asking you, how have you contributed to the chaos? If you don't even know how to create a safe space in your marriage, I'm telling you, it's not time for you to walk away. You don't even know if there's some things that you could do differently. So that's question number one. How have I contributed to the chaos in my marriage? All right, here's question number, how was that for you all? Was that tough? Okay, here's question number two. Have I really done all that I can do? Whew, before you walk away, you need to ask yourself, have I really, really done all that I can do. Let me tell you, um, again, I am in the trenches of marriage every single day. And I have people who stay together. I have couples that I work with who stay together. Um, they fight through the tough stuff. Um, they're able to rebound from infidelity. They're able to rebound from betrayal. They're able to rebound from um, a sexless marriage. I've worked with couples who have rebound from the tough stuff. 
but I've also worked with couples who tried really hard to rebound from the tough stuff and they were unable to. They, they ended up walking away from the marriage and in my counseling office, it's a no judgment zone. But when people come in my office in the front of the, in the, in the, front of the issue, I tell them this, you have the rest of your life to be divorced. I don't tell you to stay married. I don't tell you to get divorced. I do tell you though, you have the rest of your life to be divorced. So before you walk away, I want you to ask yourself, have I really done everything that I can do? Let me pause. Let me tell you why at the top of our conversation, I said, I don't always like these kind of conversations. Again, I'm a woman of faith. I am a professional counselor and a licensed, um, a professional counselor and a certified life coach. But the reality is I believe the Bible and, and I believe in fighting for marriage. And what we find is that a lot of people, they are just looking for somebody to give them an out. They're just looking for somebody to say the right thing to tell them that they can walk away. And I want to be super careful that I'm not setting someone up for that. But the reality is we know that marriage is end. So before you walk away, I want you to ask yourself, have you really done everything that you can do. People will say, Robin, I have prayed about it and nothing has changed. But faith without works is dead. Prayer is super important, but prayer requires action. So as you've prayed about it, what did God tell you to do? And have you done it? Have you gone to counseling? You and your spouse? Your spouse won't go to counseling? Have you gone by yourself? Have you committed to ongoing support from a professional that can help you see your stuff, that can help you understand your spouse better? Have you done that? Have you done the self-work? Have you made sure that you're not deflecting your personal life dissatisfaction onto your marriage? Have you intentionally given the marriage a reprieve? Because often when there is tension in the marriage and we are drilling down on the marriage, there begins to become more tension. Have you given the marriage a reprieve? Have you sought wisdom from someone who has been there and done that? Have you found a mentor who has lived through tough times in their marriage and allowed them to walk you through this season? Have you had faith-filled prayer intervention? Have you found a prayer warrior who is serious about interceding and partnered with them to intercede for your marriage? Again, the question is, have you really, really done everything you can do? All right, we are talking about, is, um, should I stay or should I go? Three questions to ask yourself. The first question is, how have I contributed to the chaos in my marriage? Question number two is, have I really done everything I can do? Before I give you question number three, again, I want to invite you to join me for the Avoiding the Roommate Zone. I am going to share with you the simple four-step process to help you avoid the roommate zone. Just go to ibelieveinmarriage.com slash roommate zone. All right, here is question number three. Have I truly counted the cost? Before you walk away, I want you to ask yourself, have I truly counted the cost? And listen, I'm not just talking about financially, although we know there is a financial cost for divorce. Just ask any of your friends that you know have gone through a divorce and they'll tell you all about the financial cost. I'm not even talking about that though. I'm asking you, have you considered all of the ramifications that come from this decision? Have you considered the spiritual consequences? Because hear me, we have free will, but when we make decisions, there can be spiritual consequences. Have you really considered the spiritual consequences? Have you considered the physical realities? Have you really thought about the emotional repercussions? Can I tell you something? Um, even with my friends who have personally gone through a divorce and even with many of my clients, now there are definitely people who are saying, Robin, I know I made the right decision. That's what I needed to do. It was very difficult. There was um, a cost associated with it. Again, not just financial, but I know I made the right decision. But I also have plenty, plenty of people in my life who have said, Robin, I, I jumped the gun. I really should have thought about it more. I didn't do everything I could do. So I want you to really count the cost. Have you counted the emotional, the spiritual, the physical consequences? If you have children, have you thought about the impact on the children? Have you really thought about what it would be like um, rebuilding your life with someone else? 
have you truly counted the cost? Again, we are talking about should I stay or should I go? And this is a tough conversation because we know that marriage is a covenant. And for those of us who are faith-filled, we know that God really can restore anything that is broken. We know that when we trust God, he really can bring beauty from ashes. But we also know that each of us know someone who, who loves God and their marriage has ended. So then how do we know? How do we know when, when you're at that place of you're ready to give up and you're ready to walk away and you're wondering, what is it that I can do? I've tried everything. I want you to consider these three questions. If you have a friend who you know is on the brink, who you know is struggling, don't call her out. Don't call him out. You don't have to post this on their page. Send it to them in a private message. Text them and tell them to go to IBelieveInMarriage.com or tell them to go to Facebook.com slash I believe in marriage to watch this video. Remember, friends don't let friends have crappy marriages. So I'm going to give you the three questions again. The question number one is, how have I contributed to the chaos in my marriage? Question number two is, have I really done everything I can do? And then question number three is, have I counted the cost? That's it, y'all. Those are the three questions I want you to consider. Before you go, whether you are on the brink of walking away or even if your marriage is in a good place, I want to invite you to join me for this training. Listen, every couple I know has either been in the roommate zone, they're trying to get out of the roommate zone, or they are trying to stay as far away from the roommate zone as they can. Listen, the roommate zone is that place that often happens because life happens. And so I want to share with you an easy four-step process that you can use to ensure that you get out and you stay out of the roommate zone. Go to IBelieveInMarriage.com slash roommate zone to sign up. You got three options, March 6th, March 7th, or March 8th. All right? I'll see you guys soon. Take care.